Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, March 16th, 5.31 a.m. Central Time as I speak here. May corn futures up one at 627 and a half. May soybeans up seven and a quarter at 1496 and a half. May Chicago wheat down four and three quarters at 698. May Kansas City wheat down three and three quarters at 816. May spring wheat down two at 850 and a half. We've got more China headlines this morning. China is back in the market for U.S. corn. USDA uh, reporting another flash sale yesterday. USDA reported a flash sale of 667,000 metric tons. That's about 26 million bushels of corn to Chinese buyers for delivery during the current marketing year. So these are old crop bushels. This is the second such flash sale to China in as many days. The two sales combined total about 50 million bushels. Uh, we haven't seen these sort of corn sales to China since April of last year, and there could be more to come. The rumors that circulated two weeks ago suggested that China may have purchased 70 or 80 million bushels of U.S. corn. So don't be surprised to see another flash sale at 8 a.m. Central, either today or tomorrow. U.S. corn is competitive on the export market. Brazil is going to be busy shipping soybeans for the next few months. Argentina has major crop problems. Ukraine has a war. The U.S. is essentially the only game in town uh, until July or August. So you could see some more business. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see some more business uh, to China, as a matter of fact, reported today or tomorrow. African swine fever is again a problem in China. Reuters reporting yesterday that infections increased substantially beginning in January. Analysts at a Chinese security firm said this. Data from swine fever virus testing companies show that the number of positive detections exploded after the New Year holiday. The order of magnitude in a single month has reached the level of the whole year of 2022. We guess that the current swine fever infection area in northern production areas may be reaching 50%. Now, this firm believes that the outbreak is not nearly as serious as the 2019 outbreak, uh, but that hog production in this instance could be reduced by 10%. Uh, your northern provinces of China are, are the country's top hog producers, uh, generally speaking. The impact of the outbreaks depend on how early they're detected and what the response is. Reuters says that a lot of Chinese farms don't report the outbreaks to the government. One analyst said that low hog prices in China are the result of animals going to slaughter at any weight due to ASF. Uh, you got to remember back during the trade war time frame, China was largely able to avoid U.S. soybeans during the trade war um, because they had ASF during that same time frame. So it doesn't sound like this is going to be nearly as bad as it was back then, but you never know. And this is something to be aware of when it comes to uh, demand for soybeans in particular. China would like to see the Black Sea grain deal extended. A Chinese foreign minister spokesperson said today that Beijing hopes a deal can be implemented in a balanced and comprehensive manner and that China would like to strengthen communication with Ukraine, Russia, and the UN. Um, as of late, so China has some interest here because they buy corn from Ukraine and um They've also kind of been trying to play peacemaker as of late. Like they've been trying to broker a peace deal. China's called for a ceasefire fire on a couple of occasions. China's President Xi is going to visit Putin in Moscow next week and then plans on meeting Ukraine's Zelensky after that. Um, so they've been pushing this, this peace idea, and I'm not really sure the motive here. Perhaps China is trying to score some political or diplomatic points. This war in Ukraine is hugely unpopular overseas, and it's becoming less popular here in the United States. Polling reveals that the war and continued aid to Ukraine are becoming uh, more unpopular in the U.S. Only 48% of Americans support providing weaponry and direct assistance to Ukraine, according to a recent AP poll. So I don't know what China's motive is here. I know that they probably like to continue to buy some grain uh, from Ukraine and uh, maybe trying to score some political points as well. Hey guys, I did a premium video yesterday with Brian Split from agmarket.net. Brian is really great with charts. Uh, we've seen a little bit of a recovery in the corn market, also in the wheat market. We talked about some potential upside targets, and we got pretty specific here. If you guys want to see this video, sign up for the premium deal today. I just noticed I had a typo in my um, uh, screenshot here. But if you want to see this video, go to uh, standardgrain.com. Sign up today. 50 bucks a month for the premium deal, guys. New premium video every day, email every day. Tons of information direct from me. Uh, no other fee, no other obligation. Cancel at any time. The Credit Suisse uh, situation appears to have cooled, so the bank's stock rose more than 30% today on news that the bank will borrow up to $54 billion from the Swiss National Bank. The Swiss National Bank said that Credit Suisse, 
uh, quote, meets the capital and liquidity requirements imposed on systemically important banks. Credit Suisse was a big deal yesterday, well, Tuesday and Wednesday. The stock tumbled uh, earlier this week after the bank revealed, uh, quote, material weakness in its financial reporting for the last two years. So there was some chatter regarding a failure similar to the SVB debacle here in the United States, caused some, term some turmoil in financial and some commodity markets even yesterday. It was kind of a messy deal in a lot of the outside markets yesterday. The National Oilseed Processors Association released February crush data yesterday. NOPA members crushed 165.4 million bushels of soybeans last month. That was the best print for any February on record, but was actually a little bit below trade expectations. Uh, the February crush was down 7.6% versus January, but up fractionally versus the same month last year. To see a seasonal decline in U.S. soybean crush in February is pretty normal. October, November, December, January are your best months of the year, typically. It's, 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 it's normal to see a slight decline in February. NOPA members account for 95% of all soybeans processed in the United States. I have no concerns whatsoever about the crush pace. Margins are excellent. We've got new plants coming online. These numbers uh, in all likelihood will improve here in the coming months and, and certainly in the coming years. U.S. ethanol production improved marginally last week. Weekly output 1.014 million barrels per day. That was up slightly on the week, down about 1% versus the same period last year. Pretty normal seasonal print, uh, slightly better than the same week in 2019, slightly worse than last year. Ethanol production margins have improved uh, quite a bit given the decline in corn prices. You know, out in the Western Corn Belt, up until recently, production margins had been negative because of strong basis levels and high cash corn prices. Those cash corn prices have retreated making ethanol uh, margins break even to positive in the West and, and really positive in the East. There are areas of the Eastern Corn Belt where they had a big corn crop last year where margins are 30 to 50 cents positive using spot prices of corn, ethanol, DDGs, inputs, all that stuff. Ethanol stocks are the highest on record seasonally. Implied U.S. gasoline demand was up fractionally on the week. Um, on average, over the last four weeks, gasoline demand is running about on par or fractionally higher, or I'm sorry, fractionally below the same week last year. Crude oil futures fell sharply yesterday on a continuation basis. Spot month WTI futures fell to their lowest level since January of 2021, bottoming uh, below $66 per barrel. The sell-off had to do with two things, I guess. There was some data indicating a steady build in U.S. Uh, crude stockpiles. In addition to all of these banking concerns and general economic concerns, the market uh, crude oil was able to close off of its lows yesterday and it trades marginally higher this morning, but still a pretty ugly deal overall. We've got an export sales report this morning at 7.30 a.m. Central Time. Corn sales for the current marketing year expected 700000 to $1.5 million. Soybean sales expected... Um, 500 to 700 wheat sales expected 75,000 to 500,000 metric tons. Cattle market got beat up pretty good yesterday. A uh, cash trade's been off a little bit this week, 163 to 164, which would be down a dollar or two uh, versus last week. US dollars mixed this morning. Stock market's pretty quiet. Bonds are quiet. Uh, gold and silver are quiet. Crude oil is up 74 cents in the April WTI at 68.38. Have a great day, guys. I'll talk to you Friday.